All right, so we left chapter five in part one looking at external standards. And we said one of the limitations to the external standards is that it doesn't always match the matrix that your, your sample is actually in. And so this can cause discrepancies with the external standard as the matrix can have interference that are going to either boost the signal of the sample or maybe underreport the analyte within your sample because of the matrix interference, depending on which way that interference is going to go. So there are other types of matrix matching standards that you can do to be able to look at this effect. So one of these ways is using standard additions. So this can help us avoid complications of trying to match the matrix of the standards in our external standards if we essentially carry out the standardization in the sample itself. And so this is known as the method of standard additions. And just like we saw with our external standards, you can do this with the single sample or you can do this with multiple standard additions. The multiple standard additions will give you the better data um, because again, you're going to create a standard curve just like we did with the external standards. So essentially, what you're going to do with the standard additions, if you have a single standard addition, you're going to have your analyte at some concentration and you will add a little bit of the volume. So this is called V naught or the initial volume that you're going to put into your volumetric flask. And then you're going to dilute that sample to the mark in the volumetric flask. So whatever that final volume will be is going to be VF, right? And then to a second flask, you're going to add the same amount of your analyte. And then you're going to add a known volume of a standard at a known concentration of that standard. Right, and in standard additions, the important thing is that the um, analyte and the standard are the same thing. So they're the same molecule. You're going to mix them together. You've got a known concentration here. You've got your unknown concentration of your analyte within your sample, and you're adding that to both of the tubes, only adding the standard to one of the tubes, and then diluting to that final volume. So for the single standard additions, you're going to have to have two samples, right? The one that does not contain the standard and then the one that does contain the standard. Both of the samples will have your uh, matrix, your uh, sample with your analyte in it. So this second sample is essentially a spike sample. And so we'll say the signal of our initial sample, uh, the um, one that doesn't have the standard is S SAMP, and then S spike is going to be the sample plus the spike of our standard that we added to it. So for thinking about our uh, signal of our sample, this is the one that does not have the standard in it. Um, we know that it is a function of proportionality to the concentration of our sample. But our sample is not fully concentrated, right? Because we did a dilution. So we have to also take that dilution into effect in this. So this is our volume of the concentrated uh, sample. And then this is the final volume of the um, diluted sample that we made um, over here, right? So you put a small amount, V naught of your sample, dilute it up to the final volume. So we have to take into account the dilution um, inside our equation. And so that's accounted for with this term here. So that's the signal of our sample. And then we have the signal of the spike sample that also contains the standard in addition to our unknown, the analyte, right? And so um, if the addition of our standard is very small um, volume-wise to the overall solution, then this Ka value is going to be the same in the spike sample as it is in your sample that's not spiked. Um, and that's because the standard is a concentrated standard. It's purified and it's very concentrated. So you only have to add a very small amount to your sample. And so it's not going to greatly affect the matrix that your sample is in. 
right? So if you're having some matrix effects um, that give this Ka value up here, it's going to be about the same in this one here. So what you can do with these two equations, you can solve for Ka and get everything else in the equation on the other side, right? So if I divide by this whole thing, right, I can isolate Ka. I can do the same thing here with the signal of the sam uh, sample. If I divide by everything else over on this side, I can isolate Ka. And then um, I've got two different ways of expressing Ka, and so I can set those equal to each other, right? And you'll notice then um, you'll get your signal. This is your measured uh, item, so maybe you're taking the absorbance of your sample might be your reading. So you've got this one of your sample and the spike, you'll have those values. You know the concentration of your standard and you know all of the volumes that you did your dilutions with. So the only unknown in this equation is going to be the concentration of your analytes. So if you solve for CA, then you can get the concentration of your analyte. So this is a really unique way of being able to add that standard directly to your sample. So there's an alternative way to doing a single standard addition as well. It's also possible to add your standard directly to your sample. So say you had a sample, but you can't really dilute it much more and actually see the signal. So in that case, you can just add the standard to that sample. Um, that, that is going to change the volume, right? And so you have to put that into your equation, right? So your sample in this case, there's no dilution, so you don't have that volume component in the sample itself. So you'll measure that. That's just going to be Ka times the concentration, just like normal. And then you'll, you'll have this spike sample, um, but instead of having just the V final on both of them, you've got V naught, right, which is your sample, um, and then the V naught plus the standard that you put in, that's going to be your final concentration or your final volume over here. And then for the concentration of the standard, you'll have the volume of the standard that you put in, and then that final volume will also be the same, the V naught plus the standard. So this is another way that you can set this equation up. You just have to account for the volumes that you've put in there. The Ka's, again, because the standard is going to be a very small addition, are going to be equivalent in the sample and the spike. So you can solve for Ka again and then set these two equations equal to each other. So if I divide both sides um, by Ca on this one, right, I've got this as sample over Ca. And then the spike, if I divide by this whole term here, I can isolate Ka, and then I can set those equal to each other. So again, I know all of the values in this equation except for the concentration of the analyte. And so I can just solve for Ca in this equation and um, find out what the concentration of that analyte is in the sample. So that's two ways that you can do uh, standard additions in the single standard addition method.